So welcome everybody to um, another webinar by India BioStreams. Uh, we present to you a webinar series again um, by, from the Department of Biotechnologies. This is, this is the fifth webinar. This will be on promoting uh, translational and industrial research. Uh, so we, we have with us two speakers. Uh, today we have uh, Dr. Alka Sharma, who's scientist G at the Department of Biotechnology. Uh, we also have with us uh, Dipanvita Chattopadhyay, who's the chairperson and the CEO of IKP Knowledge Park in Hyderabad. And uh, we have a lot of you join from join us from across uh, across the world, predominantly in India, but also from the US, UK. Uh, so we welcome you all. Those of you who have who are live with us um, uh, joining this 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 webinar. So welcome everybody. Uh, so. We want to announce that we are simulcasting this uh, this webinar via YouTube live stream. So if you have any issues with your audio or video, for those of you who are watching us on Zoom, uh, you can uh, join this webinar via the YouTube live stream as well. Uh, so you can also find this live streaming on DBT's homepage, which is www.dbtindia.gov.in. You'll also find this on the India Bioscience homepage, and that is www.indiabioscience.org. Uh, sorry about that. So we'll begin uh, by giving a few housekeeping instructions like we always do. Um, this is in order to, for you to have uh, uh, a smooth experience and also interact uh, well with us as we, as we go through this webinar. Uh, so what I would do is I would explain some of the settings for those of you who have joined us uh, via Zoom. Uh, so if you're, join, if you're joining us via Zoom, your screen is going to look like what I've shared on the screen uh, share right now. If you're using the web app version of Zoom, it's going to look exactly like this. If you're using a downloaded version of Zoom, it's going to look slightly different, but the features that I will demonstrate will be the same. So at the bottom right, um, panel of your Zoom screen, you'll find three icons, okay? So the one to the leftmost uh, co corner is the chat icon. Um, please keep in mind that as participants, you will not be able to use the chat icon to talk to us, but rather we will use that to share relevant links to you related to the content of the webinar. And then in the middle, you'll find a raise hand icon. And that's something when you press on, it's you can, use that to raise your virtual hand uh, if you want to ask any questions. However, I request that you save your questions to the last 10 minutes or so of the webinar where the flow will open for Q&A. Now, if you have pressing questions in between while the webinar is going on, if you want to reach out to us in case of any difficulties, you can use uh, the Q&A box. And Q&A box, uh, uh, when, once you click on it, uh, it will uh, open up a screen like this. You can type your queries, you can send the queries anonymously also if you wish to. Uh, all right, so that's about the um, housekeeping instructions. So we would like to begin by getting to know a, a bit about you, uh, those of you who have joined us. So let me launch the poll. So you should see a poll on your screen. Uh, for those of us who are watching us on YouTube, we will share a Google form with you, which you can use to let us know about, about yourself. So please let us know a little bit about yourselves through this poll. Okay, so let's end the poll right now and I'll share the results. So it looks like uh, all of you are from India and uh, a good part of you are from the South, 43% from the South, 19% from the North, 2% from East, 5% from Central Zone, and 7% from Northeast as well. So welcome, and, and a lot of you are researchers, 31% of you who have joined us are researchers. Uh, we have both from academia and industry. We have some 7% of educators and students, uh, a lot of students, undergraduate, masters, PhD students, 5% postdocs, and we have a science communicator. So welcome to all of you. I hope you would enjoy this webinar. Now I will uh, over to Dr. Alka to share about uh, DBT's uh, programs for promoting translational and industrial research, Dr. Alka. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Alka Sharma, Advisor, Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. Today, I am going to share with you research facilities, resources, and technology platform for promoting translation and industrial research. The efforts made by Department of Biotechnology so far. I'm just trying to go to my next slide. So when we talk about biotechnology sector, over the past five years, global biotech industry has grown by 5.1% and India contributes 3% of its market share to global biotech industry. India is ranked 12th in the world in biotech sector and third in Asia Pacific. We are the largest vaccine manufacturer and also, we have built a strong research foundation across the country. In order to promote public power partnership, an organization called Biotechnology Industry Research Assistant Council has been established by the Department of Biotechnology as its public sector undertaking. On your right side, you can see the numbers of biotech uh, industry startups, biotech products which have reached to the market incubators established across the country and also the teaching and research institutes across the country. So currently we have crossed 50 billion US dollar in the bioeconomy and we are targeting to achieve 100 billion US dollar bioeconomy by 2025. So to reach at this stage, the government has made a concerted effort by laying down a strategy, creating ecosystem to facilitate end-to-end -end processes and also to create a pool of innovators and also critical mass of desired uh, skills and also uh, address regulatory issues from time to time. So nurturing innovation and entrepreneurship is one of the key components of national biotechnology development strategy. And here government is acting as a facilitator for creating and building a complete ecosystem for translational and industrial research that is right from ideation to commercialization. This is being achieved through promoting high quality indigenous research and development for innovative technologies, creating a critical mass of innovators to promote techno entrepreneurship for fostering back to bench side research, and also the strengthening infrastructure and also creating new infrastructure for translating research leads it's um, evaluation, validation, clinical trial, and animal-based research. The last one very important is formulating guidelines, policies to promote public power partnership to encourage uh, clinicians, academic, academician, and also the industry startups to work together to innovate new technologies and also for simplification or adaptation of existing technologies, which can be used for the mass for our country. So uh, here I would like to emphasize on the DVT schemes which are available for translational industrial development and for promotion of innovation and translation for technology development. Uh, uh, they, the list is uh, here for some of the schemes have been shown in the chart that includes National Bio Summer Mission which uh, the focus is on vaccine development, medical technology innovation, biosimilars, and also we have a scheme on bioclusters across the country, biotech parks and incubators, medtech innovation, which I'm going to cover through biodesign program and biomedical engineering. The schemes also uh, covers Make in India, Startup India, Accelerated Translation Grant for commercialization, the capacity building, the various programs we have that includes infrastructure creation and also strengthening the existing infrastructure and also training and workshop for having a desired skills manpower. International partnership is one of the key components for this sector. And also we have 15 autonomous institutions and one international uh, institution, ICGB, which where the uh, theme-based research are being conducted 
for promotion and facilitation of translation industrial development programs and public partnership is being encouraged by the department of biotechnology for which biorec has been established and i am going to cover various schemes of biorec in my subsequent slides so national biopharma mission is a collaboration between government of india and world bank and this mission is being implemented by biorec a psc of department of biotechnology and this is a uh, true example of industry academia collaborative uh, mission so overall aim is to make india a hub for design and development of affordable and accessible technologies so the department of biotechnology has major thrust on vaccine research and development this slide shows various components of various uh, of vaccine development right from early stage to preclinical and then to clinical development that is from phase 1 to phase 3 this includes development of novel cell lines establishing repositories glp and gmp facilities and also clinical trial network across the country so coming to the bio cluster biotech parks and incubators these are the schemes which uh, uh, are very important to bring synergy in all stakeholders so in bio cluster this was announced by the government in 2014 and department of biotechnology has taken initiative and is established Four bio cluster across the country, and they are NCR bio clusters. They are all autonomous institutes of the, in Delhi and NCR region are the partners. Similarly, we the second bio cluster was established in Bangalore, where Instem and CBS and CKM partner. Then the uh, bio cluster was established at Kalyani, where NIBMB, Tata Memorial Center, IICB, both institutions, and ISA Kolkata are working together for uh, the common goal. and then very uh, recently the pune bio cluster has been established so uh, from the experience we actually uh, thought that we, it would be better to bring in university and industry into this setup of bio cluster so recently now we have developed a scheme and we have got the approval to uh, implement the scheme uh, that is biotech urjit cluster where university and industry will also be important component for the bio cluster and in the coming uh, financial commission we are now we are going to set up almost the 10 new bio clusters including these four across the country and then when we talk about biotech parks and incubators these are old schemes of dbt which the dbt initiated sometimes in 2000 and the overall aim of this scheme is to provide ready to use infrastructure and business support services to nurture biotech enterprises and minimize their financial burden so far we have established new nine biotech parks across the country and uh, out of them five have been completed basically the uniqueness of these biotech parks uh, is they are all are working in close association with the state and the state is taking the ownership of these parks so in order to promote medtech innovation and also to create a pool of leaders to foster and promote medical technology innovation in india the department of biotechnology also implemented biodesign program a decade uh, earlier and then the uniqueness of this program here is a team comprised of medical professional product designer engineer entrepreneur they are being selected at national level and they work together on the common goal and uh, they uh, go through the bio design process which is identify invent and implement so basically it begins with clinical immersion is a end to end process right from clinical immersion up to commercialization as of now we have four bio design centers across the country based on themes are medical devices implants in vitro diagnostics health technology and also uh, the implants in bioengineering and uh, the oldest one is the school of international bio design which has been set up at aim iit in and uh, iit delhi and with uh, initially it was in collaboration with stanford university now there are other international partners have joined hands and the focus of this uh, center is on medical devices and implants similarly we have uh, the center for bio design at translational health science technology institute and the focus is on vitro diagnostics where thsti has collaboration with icgv and aims and their international partner is university of turku uh, we also have a center for health technology innovation in iit madras so they are focusing on health technology 
at affordable costs and the biodesign bioengineering initiative at IIC Bangalore, where they have established um, collaboration with St. John's, CMC, uh, and other hospitals. So in the uh, uh, next few slides, I'm going to show you the impact of these schemes and programs. So if you can see that uh, the a number of medical technology startups have been uh, established uh, by the fellows which, uh, who have been trained under the biodesign program. Some of the uh, product of these startups have been commercialized and others are at advanced stages of development. Similarly, you can see the technology licensed and commercialized uh, developed under the, this program. And uh, you can also see the technology, the startups, uh, and also the outcome uh, of uh, the health care technology innovation center by design program, where you can see that a number of technologies have been developed and then some of them have been commercialized and others are at various stages, similarly at THSTI, uh, where the focus is on in vitro diagnostics. As I already mentioned, my engineering and by design initiative at IC Bangalore, you can see the number of collaborators they have established with the clinical setup and also industry, with industry. And a pool of innovators have been trained in by design process and also uh, a number of technologies have been developed, licensed, commercialized, and uh, startups have been created. The number you can see in this slide. Coming to the policies and scheme to build enabling eco uh, ecosystem for the startups, as you know, the government of India has uh, come out with the policies like Make in India, Stand Up India, and Action Plan for Startups. This slide, you can show, you can see that um, the Startup India Action Plan was launched by the Honorable Prime Minister on 16 January 2016. And this hub will be a single point of contact for the entire ecosystem and enable knowledge exchange and access to funding. Details are available on the website. However, I would like to just um, highlight the focus of this initiative. They say basically it's a simplification of procedures and also to promote handholding and provide funding and also incentives. The uh, this uh, also involves the facilitation of industry academia partnership and incubation. There's a lot of reward uh, uh, have been given by the government to those startups to bring their products to the next level. So uh, through these enabling policies and uh, ecosystem which have been created by the government of India for nurturing innovation and entrepreneurship over the past five years, more than 1700 biotech startups have been created by the innovators in the country. And uh, just to highlight the efforts made by the Department of Biotechnology with its PSU Biotech, Make in India facilitation cell has been established in Biotech. And also the, uh, now the last year, the first hub, this is a facilitation of innovation that uh, cell has been established at Biotech where uh, interministerial uh, meeting is being held with the innovators to resolve their queries. I'm going to share the detail in my subsequent slides in this presentation. So as I mentioned that in order to promote public partnership, the Department of Biotechnology has established Bio Biotechnology Industry Research Assistant Council, that is BIRE, for nurturing innovation and promoting entrepreneurship, that is right from ideation to commercialization. This is a section Eight company, this is not for profit company that has been established by DBT. And the focus is on to promote entrepreneurship, provide fundings and grants to the startups, SMEs, and also uh, the various industry and the term with some terms and conditions, which is listed on the website, and also to provide mentorship at each level. So basically, uh, the uh, entrepreneurs, startups, small medium enterprises and also biotech companies are being supported and facilitated through this biotech scheme and uh, for uh, all stages of the product development, right from discovery to proof of concept, early and late stage development, validation and scale up, and also for pre-commercialization. Through its various schemes, which I am going to cover one by one, basically from ignition grant to the early stage and then the late stage and all then finally the product development and commercialization. I would like to mention here that on, uh, now all the proposals are being received online and there's a process which is now, uh, you can see in this slide that after receiving the application, there's a process that uh, we follow and until the 
selection of the application so uh, the uh, support is being provided in terms of uh, the financial support through various schemes intellectual property and technology management incubation support and also hand holding and facilitation <clears throat> So as I mentioned earlier, there is a biotechnology ignition grant, and that is a big scheme. And the details are provided now on the website. But you can see that basically this is a meant to foster generation of ideas with commercialization potential, and also to upscale and validate proof of concept to encourage researchers to take technology closer to the market through a startup. Similarly, small business innovation research initiative (SIBRI) is also to take startup SMEs to the next level of funding support. And uh, this scheme was first launched by DBT in 2005 to promote public-private partnership. The overall objective is to provide support for early-stage pre-proof of concept research in biotechnology by industry, and also to support new indigenous technology to assist new enterprises to fold. appropriate linkages with academia and government so uh, calls are being uh, the are uh, the proposals are being invited to rfa and uh, so in february june and october these are open calls and details of the projects and also who can apply and what is the limit of the um, uh, cost and uh, also other terms and conditions are available on the website but i would like to highlight here that the company should have at least 51% of the share of company and in india similarly this is the next step is a biotechnology industry partnership program and this is for harnessing innovation through industry partnership they are also the calls uh, are there three times a year and the same terms and condition applies here 51% of share of the company should be held by indian company and the uh, uniqueness of this is uh, intellectual property rights belong to the industry and industry has to pay the royalty and royalty uh, is up to the uh, amount when is uh, uh, the royalty amount paid is equal to the grant provided to the innovator so coming to the next scheme that is promoting academic research conversion to enterprise that is called pace it is the, the support is being provided in the two categories that is academic innovation research and contract research scheme as name indicates the academic innovation research is meant for promotion or development of proof of concept for a process and product development by academia with or without the involvement of industry and the duration is 18 months total cost is 50 lakhs so if there are some research leads available the academy uh, set up then they can apply for this funding and uh, then the contract research scheme is aimed at validation of the prototype and the duration here is 36 months and there is no capping on the total cost of the project so this is uh, uh, the bio incubators nurturing entrepreneurship for scaling technology that is bionest and this is a, a scheme of again uh, the bionic is supporting so this is scheme across the country and it provides incubation space to startups and entrepreneurs and also it connect with industry and academia interactions for efficient exchange of ideas and also to facilitate technical and business development and the provides enabling services and also to provide access to the world class infrastructure so as of now 41 bio incubators have been established across the country so through this slide i would like to emphasize that there is a, uh, the focus on capacity building which includes both infrastructure development as well as uh, manpower uh, as uh, per the need of the uh, programs so basically a number of training programs in the workshops are being organized annually for the uh, the industry and startups which can be uh, uh, utilized by them for their projects So as I mentioned earlier, there is a scheme called First Hub. This is meant for facilitation and handholding of innovators and startups across the country. Here, as per one of the recommendations of the Niti Aayog, it was decided that there should be a forum where all represent representative of all ministry and department concerned dealing with 
the startup innovator projects should sit together and uh, address the queries of startups, entrepreneurs, researchers, academicians, and incubation centers, small medium enterprises uh, to take their, uh, it, it can help them to take their products to the next level. So this is now uh, being implemented by BIREC where we have representative from DBT, BIREC, ICMR, CDCSO, and also now we have added representative from NIB and other organizations. So they are now addressing queries related to regulatory pathways and regulation, funding opportunities, mentorship, investment opportunities, market access, and industry academia partnership. Coming to the Grand Challenge India program that has been established in partnership with national and international partners, their focus is on maternal and child health, agriculture, nutrition, sanitation and hygiene, awarding innovation in, in healthcare, and also there is a strong component for encouraging ideation and uh, the applications are being invited through RFA and uh, this uh, is being uh, selected on the merit basis and this, uh, through this we are also promoting and facilitating translational and industrial development programs. So as per the mandate of BIREC, Ignite, Innovate and Incubate, over the past five years, uh, the number of technologies have been commercialized and equity based seed funds have been provided uh, and also the incubation space have been created for startups and incubators for incubators and regional and entrepreneurship centers have been established across the country here i would like to also highlight that recently in uh, march 2019 the government of india has uh, modified the new drug and clinical trials rules to facilitate translation and also uh, uh, to bring uh, the uh, new component where this uh, uh, the, uh, the existing uh, rules have been modified and this has been notified by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in Mar on 25th March 2019 where the highlights the details are available on the website but I would like to highlight that uh, there is a component of reduced timeline and if some trial has been done outside the country, so there are some terms and conditions, but waiver for drug approved and marketed in countries is specified under rules if no major serious adverse events have been reported. And also there is a, a strong component for clinical trial approval validity, orphan drug, and an independent ethics committee roles and responsibility. Similarly, national medical device rule, which uh, rolled out in 2017, have been implemented from January 2018 there are also now the, the, um, the modifications have been done at various levels to facilitate translation industrial development. So as I mentioned that they are, I have given an overview of the schemes of Department of Biotechnology and BIREC and the details may be viewed at the DBT websites and also the BIREC website. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Alka. So we will, uh, before we get, we have Dr. Uh, have Dipanvita join us. We will do another audience poll just to see um, what is the interest level of applying to it, some of the schemes that Dr. Alka walked us through. So you would see a poll launch uh, on your screens any moment now. Um, please go ahead and let us know um, your that whether you have applied or you be you were interested in applying for these schemes, the biotech ignition grant, the SBIRS, BIRI grant, small business innovation research initiative, or biotechnology innovation partnership program, or promoting academic research conversion to enterprise. So a lot of interest, 61% of you have applied or interested in applying for the biotech ignition grant. Um, a good amount of interest also for, for Small Business Innovation Research Initiative. 39% of you have indicated yes, 39% uh, of you equal number of people maybe. Uh, and also for Biotechnology Industry Partnership Program, um, a good amount, 36% of you are interested and 56% of you are interested in applying for or have applied for promoting academic research conversion to enterprise space. Uh, so. Uh, 
great. So it, it, hopefully this uh, program gave you the information that you needed. So I'll stop the poll and I would like to invite Deepanvita to uh, share um, about the IKP knowledge part. So um, now, you know, uh, the life science innovation ecosystem that uh, Dr. Alka was talking about, and we all know that we have the government, we have industries, we have enablers like uh, the research parks and incubators that uh, we manage at IKP Knowledge Park. And there are several other players and we have the academia and uh, HR. So if you look at the way uh, the life science innovation ecosystem in India is working, uh, what does BIRAC DBT do? Uh, BIRAC actually sets the innovation policy uh, it, along with DBT and there's funding for infrastructure and innovators. Uh, it has so far put in 978 crores and provide regulatory and IP support, training and mentorship, international partnerships, and so on and so forth. What does the industry and startups do at this point is if you look at the entire uh, ecosystem, there are about 600 uh, established companies and about 3000 startups of its 671 startups and innovators have been supported by BIRAC, which is 22%, which is actually a fantastic number. If you look at the industry commitment, uh, of the 978 crores of funding that has come from BIRAC, uh, industry has put in 937 crores. It's almost like a one is to one match. And uh, there will be 15 to 20 X in terms of investments. So 15 to 20 times more investments uh, through various infrastructure, uh, revenues and uh, funding from other sources uh, that uh, these companies excuse me, put in, uh, 133 products and technologies supported by BIRAC, about 180 patents generated through the funding. So the industry and startups work very closely with BIRAC. And if you look at the enablers, like the research parks I mentioned and the incubators, there are 41 incubators Dr. Alka already mentioned, uh, out of which has about cumulatively about 450,000 uh, SFT of space. And there are eight BIG partners, the Biotechnology Ignition Grant partners, 14 equity seed fund partners, 200 plus crore of equity fund where BIRAC actually is, acts as a fund of funds. And it invites other uh, VCs to put in money. And uh, it's about 200 crores plus equity fund. There are four regional innovation and entrepreneurship centers set up by BIRAC. And IKP is very proud to say that we have, we are one of them, uh, BRIC, BIRAC Regional Innovation Center at IKP in Hyderabad. And we, there's one early translation accelerator and five tech transfer offices are being set up as Dr. Alka Sharma mentioned. And this, is extremely important because I understand there are a lot of researchers and startups uh, that uh, are participating today in this webinar and uh, the TTOs, that these are regional TTOs that are being set up and they would serve a very important component in seeing how quickly the, translate, uh, it, the research and the innovation can be translated and commercialized. Uh, in terms of academia, the link that continues is about 150 institutes that have been supported so far by BIRAC, about 10,000 plus people trained and about 618 projects supported. This is not a small number. And you know, uh, if I talk of Mariana Mazzucato, I don't know how many of you have heard, she is an Italian American economist of repute and she has a very nice thing to say. She says, the real driver of innovation isn't loan geniuses, it's the state investment. State investment actually really, really makes uh, the needle of innovation move and we are very thankful to BIRAC to be able to do that. Now, Dr. Sharma uh, mentioned about the innovation pipeline. If you are a student who is participating, if you are a scientist, an individual innovator, a startup, or an SME, there's something there for you. And if you look at 
right from ideation stage to proof of concept to validation to commercialization to scale up, you'll see various schemes that Dr. Sharma mentioned, but you'll just, I've just bucketed them so that you know where you stand and how do you approach these schemes. Of course, there is the Bi uh, Bayrak website, but apart from the Bayrak website, there are these enablers across India, the 41 incubators supported by Bayrak, the eight partners, BIG partners, the four uh, regional centers, you can approach any one of them to understand these schemes better and uh, apply. So a scheme that I, I, I thought I'll just mention, Dr. Sharma, men, uh, Dr. Alka Sharma mentioned about a lot of the schemes, but uh, if you were a student today listening to this uh, presentation, there is something called UIC, which is basically uh, the innovation, uh, university innovation clusters that you can be part of. If your university is not, you could be the ambassador and actually talk about it, talk to your university, see that a UIC is set up. There's an application process for that. There is something called sitare. Did you know that? Sitares are basically the stars which are looking at early stage innovations. And of course, if you are a startup and you are looking at equity funding and just jumping to the commercialization and the scale, there is both uh, small amounts of equity available for validation of your technology with through seed and leap fund. And there is the equity linked ACE fund, which is for accelerating enterprises. Uh, now I come to actually IKP. IKP uh, we have a new logo, it's our 20 years, and uh, you may know the earlier logo of IKP. So uh, to the bottom right, you'll see our new logo. So we're very excited about it. And if you look at what we do, right from 2011, we've been working with Bayrak, setting up the biotech incubator. We now have two biotech incubators, one in Hyderabad and one in Bangalore, and we have various grant schemes. and. Interesting, why I've put this up is each year almost you'll see IKP getting more and more involved with BIRAC to take the innovation ecosystem. But remember, this is just not IKP. Similarly, there'll be CCAM, there is Venture Center, there is FITT, Venture Center in Pune, uh, FITT in uh, Delhi, there is KIT in Bhuvneshwar, and there are so many other incubators that would be actually joining these uh, programs. So we are very lucky to have six concurrent programs running. And if uh, we are lucky and we set up the regional TTO in Hyderabad, we will, that will be our seventh program with BIRAC. So with all that, we have actually touched 8,000 innovators, 23 clusters we are mapping through our BIRAC Regional Innovation Center. We have about 220 grant and seed funded projects, 65% of them, these are through BIRAC support. 200 plus incubated in two incubators, Hyderabad and Bangalore, 70% are life science related. We, in Bangalore, we have an engineering setup, which is basically a makerspace and hardware incubator. So we have uh, uh, startups which are working in areas of engineering, AI, and data. And uh, that brings actually a fantastic convergence with our life sciences startups. Um, why is this now stuck? Ah, now it's, uh, so if you, the biotech ignition grant is a game changer. And I've just listed the eight partners across India for BIG. Uh, which is IKP, CCAM, FIT, Venture Center, uh, KIT TBI in Bhuvneshwar, IIT Kanpur, uh, uh, BioNest. We have Idea Narm in Hyderabad, which is focused on Agri and in Sign IIT Mumbai. All of these partners you can approach to uh, get a BIG grant because I saw in the poll, a lot of you, 65% of you are interested in this. So it's fantastic, 14 calls, 3,000 applications, 330 plus funded, 65 applications from academia and individuals, very encouraging, over 60 women entrepreneurs, 
90 new startups, 111 products commercialized, 100 plus IP filed, 60 plus received follow on funding to the tune of 125 million US dollars. And you would be the next. So just come and apply. First Jan is the next call that's opening. The next slide actually talks of the spread. And, you know, Dr. Alka talked about where these regional centers are, which are marked with green, that these red marks are. So uh, if you look at uh, the incubators, you will see that the middle part of India, we still do not have incubators, but the regional centers are working. And if you see the green map where we are present, you will see that we are present not only in Hyderabad and Bangalore, but across India. And there are only a few white patches that we are not present in, uh, like Jharkhand, uh, Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram, and we hope to be there in another year. Coming to the startup successes in pharma med tech at IKP, this is just to tell you the kind of startups that we see in India today. Right from Loris Labs. Loris Labs is actually an uh, active pharmaceutical ingredient company, our first incubating company in 13 years. It had its IPO in December 2016 with a valuation of 4,500 crores. And that's a great example to talk about where a startup can move in 13 years in the difficult space of drug development. Of course, we have a large number of uh, medical device startups. These are the ones that are actually raised funding and they are, uh, six, I think 80% of the ones that I've listed here are funded through the BIG scheme. And they've some of them had got the SBIR grant, and they have raised uh, institutional capital, private capital. Uh, similarly, the MedTech story continues, and you will have these fantastic examples of companies that have been supported by us. One thing I would like to tell you, that when you look at some of these startups, these may be with IKP, but they are also co-incubated or in other ways related to other incubators in Bangalore with C Camp and uh, the BBC in Pune with Venture Center, with Sign, with Kit, with uh, Delhi Fit, and within Hyderabad with CCMB Incubator, Hyderabad University Incubator, and uh, AID and ARM. So actually, the incubators work together. It's a family that is important, and we are building this ecosystem together. So collaboration is the word. You have to collaborate to innovate and the ecosystem players are also collaborating. If you look at the success in the agri and the industrial bio, similarly, we have companies uh, working on crop protection in uh, converting uh, crop waste to energy and uh, drone companies. So this actually gives you a breadth of what kind of applications are uh, entertained and uh, we love to see innovations in various fields. So if you are planning to apply for a BIG grant or for any other scheme for that matter, please feel free to contact IKP or the other 40 incubators in India. Of course, you can contact uh, BIRAG directly, DVT, and we're all open to actually working with you. So this is the IKP footprint. It will just tell you, uh, we have about, uh, by March, we'll have about 400,000 square feet because we are also a science park. And we have a fund called IKP Ventures. We are raising the uh, uh, India Innovation Fund too. You will see that we run a large number of grand challenge programs. We have BRIC and uh, the last slide of mine will tell you about an impact of a science that a science park and incubator can make. This is for any incubator that's participating in today's uh, webinar. You know, we 
a science park and incubator is considered a fantastic investment multiplier because if you look at the amount of money that IKP has put in, we have put in about 100 crores. Government and other donor funds we have raised is about 200 crores. Private investment is about 2,000 crores, which is a 20x. This money is not coming back to us we are, because we are a nonprofit, but this money actually gets plowed back to do more and more work in the ecosystem. And uh, we have generated direct jobs about 7,000 and direct jobs about 25,000 plus and going. So would love to discuss with uh, any innovator what problems you have. There is there's some time for question and answer. And thank you so much. Thank you, Dipanvita. Thank you, Dr. Sharma, for a great presentation. We have time for questions. Uh, so before we, we we start, I'll just briefly let you know a little bit of a few guidelines for questions. So uh, if you want to ask your questions, uh, you would begin uh, with uh, raising your hand, that virtual hand button that you had uh, at the bottom of your screen. And then you would see this, uh, this message pop up. So be alert, we would say, uh, when you see this, uh, the host would like you to unmute your microphone, quickly unmute your microphone and ask your questions. Keep it brief. We request you uh, to ask one question. So many people will get to interact. And once you're done, unmute yourself so that we reduce ambient noise. And with that, I'll open, open the floor for questions. Um, so anybody who, oh, so Shail Vinayak is raising your hand. So I, please unmute yourself and ask your questions. Hello. Yeah, Shail, we can hear you. Please ask your question. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. It's, it was a really a wonderful experience learning and knowing about uh, what the BIREC does. And I've already been in touch with the Dr. Alka as well in the past. So my question is, I'm a small, uh, we're a small family run business and I'm a second generation entrepreneur. And uh, we look to get into certain type of type of technology for uh, reg relating to healthcare per se. Uh, and when I specifically talk about healthcare, I talk about active ingredients for personal and beauty care. Uh, we particularly do not have any access to technology per se, but we have access to capital at the moment. So is there any technological support also that we can get as far as, uh, setting up a uh, innovation center to commercializing the plant is concerned. We have the full conceptual idea of how the end product, what the end product is going to be, but we have no idea as to how we are going to produce that product. So any sort of help or support that I can, we can fetch out of uh, the whole ecosystem. So can I take the question? Please yeah. ma'am wanted to check with the moderator. Okay, uh, you know, uh, that's a great question because, uh, and it's a fantastic, it, 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 uh, all innovators would love to hear this because you are sitting with a pot of money, you want to actually commercialize, you are looking for the right technology. So uh, we could take this offline, we can discuss if, I don't know where you are, Shail, uh, we are in Hyderabad, but we can do a phone call and then we can take, because there are companies that are early stage companies that probably would be able to help you take your, uh, but we really need to understand which APIs that you want to work on. Uh, so uh, this, uh, I think we'll take it offline and uh, I'm sure the moderator will share uh, the uh, contact details and you can contact me. Thank you. Okay, so anybody else can uh, want to ask you questions uh, live can raise your hand. I see Galaxy phone raising their hands. So I'm going to uh, unmute Galaxy J7 Duo. Uh, please unmute yourself and, and ask your questions. Prashant Pyati can ask your question. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for the presentation by Dr. Alka Sharma and Dr. Deepan Vita. Um, as, as I already told in the poll, we, we have already participated in these SIBRI applications in the past. And we belong to a seed company and we are in agribusiness. Uh, um, see, uh, our understanding of SIBRI was that the funding is given for development of proof of concept. And I strongly believe that uh, the last few applications that we did, we had a, we had a pretty good uh, 
proof of concept data for, given with that. So uh, I, I I sort of it's my personal feeling that you know those uh, biomed applications are maybe slightly favored over the uh, agri businesses. Is it like that, or uh, am I getting a, fe a wrong feeling here? So if somebody could elaborate that. And uh, if the funding is given for development of proof of concept, then why the funding uh, is not given? If, if there is enough data on the, yeah, when the proof of concept is asked and it's been presented, then why it, the funding is not given? Thank you. Uh, Dr. Uh, Alka, would you like to take this question? Sure. So uh, once the proof of concept has been established uh, through the grant which you have received from SIBRI, so your question is, if I understood it correctly, that uh, the other scheme which is available there, existing scheme is for biopharma products, not for agri. Is it correct? So if that is the case, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, actually, what I'm trying to say is uh, we, we, with our applications, there was enough proof of concept data. Okay, whatever was enough for the uh, project. Okay. Yeah, and in uh, first application is to generate the proof of concept. Okay. okay. We, we, we were called for the presentations and we were asked by the uh, members, you know, BARAC members to generate the proof of concept, which we did later on and then put in the application. So you have already established a proof of concept through that grant? Yes, yes, what yes. What is your That's question what... that you are not uh, getting through the other schemes which are meant for biopharma? No, 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 not other schemes. I'm not talking about biopharma here that is that is a different part of the question i'm uh, that part is uh, whether biopharma gets more funding than the agri business that's that's the second part of the question and, and is proof of concept necessary for getting a sibri funding that's the first part of the question i hope i am clear this time yeah now this time actually uh, this uh, you have reached to the stage where you have established proof of concept so it's just not that the uh, the more funding is available for biopharma and less is for agri it is based on the uh, merit of the project. So I would suggest you just uh, revisit the schemes of uh, BIREC and also you will see where you can apply for the next stage funding after establishing proof of concept. I am sure that you will get the details. If not, that we, uh, the India Bioscience uh, team can share my email with you, then I will provide you the details. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Alka. Galaxy so, J7. Presence, come in here. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to tell you, that, uh, yes, you have uh, taken the queue as a group of concept, but when you did your second presentation, you didn't get funding. Uh, it's actually all fundings are uh, competitive. So it is not necessary that just because you have done your proof of concept, you will get funded because if there are others that were found to, because the pot is limited and every time it's competitive funding. It's not that everyone will get funded, but we would like to see the proposal as Dr. Alka Sharma said, uh, uh, you could just talk to her uh, and contact her, mail her separately and then take it forward. Uh, regarding biases, whether medtech uh, versus ag, uh, I would tell you there's a lot of uh, thrust on agriculture, uh, ag biotech, agricultural biotech proposals, and it is not that there is any thrust. We, of course, receive a lot more proposals on medtech, whether it's BID or SIBRI. So the, the number of proposals are large, so you would see more people getting funded in those areas. Okay, so can we take maybe, we're, we're kind of at the end of the webinar, so we'll take one question from the Q&A box. So is that possible, Shri? Yeah, uh, so um, there's a question from Bharat regarding biotech startups in Northeast India, if there are any special schemes for them or if there is a lot of interest in uh, exploiting the resources of Northeast India for biotechnology. 
So, uh, uh, Dr. Alka, please go ahead. So, as far as Northeast Asia is concerned, there is a, we have a dedicated cell, and that includes all sectors, and including biotech, uh, where we can uh, focus. We are focusing on biotech sector there, and uh, there are schemes available for startups, innovators, uh, and uh, you are most welcome and you can apply uh, depending on your requirement of the project and it's uh, uh, Dr. Dipanmita said that in a competitive basis but uh, depending on your project and the sector you can apply under the scheme and that can be considered. Okay. We have one more last question maybe before we wrap up. Uh, so Sundaram Sridharan wants to know that when industry collaborates with academia, if there are, how, what is the right place to apply for funding in that case? And if, what's the shared like between industry and academia in that case? Uh, Dr. Alka, please. So when industry and academia have to work together, the ideal way is that they have to join hands right from the beginning of the project so that in uh, minimum time they can get the maximum benefit because they will work together and they know the outcome of the project. And then funding is concerned, when industry is involved, they can apply to the BIREC for funding because the Department of Biotechnology cannot fund directly to the industry. But if they are in the project and then funding, they don't require funding, then they can be a part of the project and where the funds can go to the organization, uh, maybe the um, uh, any organization, and which is not industry basically, but if uh, funding is required to the industry also right from the beginning, they can apply under any scheme depending on their requirement with the project to buy it. Yeah, okay. there is this PACE grant scheme. In PACE, if it's industry academia, it's called uh, uh, CRS. You could look at the BIREC website, you will have details of the uh, contract research services, the CRS project, and you could uh, take it there. The, it, it's uh, the larger scheme space and within that, uh, the CRS. Okay, uh, one more question we will take from Maitri. Uh, she's asking if, uh, why it, it is that many people are hesitant for taking up good technologies or moving it into translations? What causes doubts in translating technology? So it's a broad question. And if either of you would like to take it up. Uh, Dr. Elka. So it's not that the innovator is hesitating to take the technology forward. Because up to the development of prototype and alpha and beta prototype when it is ready, to take that prototype further and to convert into technology and then finally for commercialization, there mm -hmm. is a, other stakeholders involved. It's not that the, the expertise which is required, they have to acquire them from other uh, stakeholders. At the same time, regulation comes within the, the development and the commercialization. But if you see the scenario has changed, it's not that, that the same which was earlier. Now, a uh, the, the lot of flexibility has been given to the innovators and the startups to take their products further to the next level and finally for commercialization. There are schemes available for addition to commercialization and also uh, actually um, in my presentation, there was one slide where I highlighted that what Bayre can support and facilitate that covered the, the hand holding and also to prepare all the documents and uh, this uh, the, the helping them to take regulatory clearances to some extent and also nowadays CBCSO team is also very proactive to help them and they have now single window uh, clear actually not clearances but the interactive window where anybody can walk in and then get the um, clarity on the product how to take that further and the, similarly, we have first hub where they can, if they have some doubt and they, they are stuck at some point of time just to, uh, develop, just to take that technology uh, to the next step and final that uh, commercialization, they can ask questions. So nowadays, there are many uh, forums where they can discuss where they want some help from the government, from also the organizations, like the, where they can, uh, and as Dr. Departmita mentioned, 41 incubators are there. They can reach out to uh, any or one of them, depending on their the nature of project. So it's not the hesitant, but it is the, it's, a, it's not that easy uh, process as the R&D project where you are just 
publishing papers and also getting your research leads highlighted. But here you have to convert the uh, idea into a product. So it's a long process and uh, it requires expertise from various stakeholders. So that is the process one has to uh, complete. Oh, okay, I just wanted to add that uh, typically a company would uh, take a technology where the technology risk has been mitigated to a large extent, they would take the business risk. And uh, so if you have just filed a patent or developed a technology which is not suitable for scale up, uh, there will be hesitation. And re really you re need to sit with industry to understand to what point uh, you need to take the technology forward so that it's uh, amenable to commercialization, it's ready for commercialization. It, it could be a little too early and you are expecting uh, something which is not well developed. Uh, you're expecting industry to absorb the technology risk, which normally uh, industry would shy from. And we could discuss this through another webinar. This, this is a big topic to uh, talk about and Hopefully the TTOs will be able to help you, the TTOs that are getting set up. Thank you. Uh, we run a little over time and, and that's that's because you know you've been a really good audience. You have a lot of questions. And so we welcome you to you know send us your questions at India Biostreams at indiabioscience.org and we'll be sure to forward it to the speakers. Um, and while you're fresh with the experience, also um, at the end of this webinar, you'll have a a sir, feedback form pop up. So let us know how you like this webinar, how you how much how useful you found it, or if there are any ideas or suggestions or feedback that you may have. Uh, with that, we will end the webinar. I would again like to thank uh, Dr. Alka Sharma, Dipanvita, for a wonderful presentation. It was extremely useful for for all of us. I hope uh, I, I sure enjoyed it. Thank you and thank you all for joining as well. Until next time, that we see you for another great webinar. Goodbye from us, um, the Department of Biotechnology and also India Biostreams, Team India Bioscience. Thank you. Thank you, India Bioscience Team. Thank you. Thanks all.